Welcome back to What You Will Learn. My name is Adam Ashton. And my name is Adam Jones. Today, we're taking you through the best bits of the Full Facts book of cold reading by Ian Rowland, a comprehensive guide to the most persuasive psychological manipulation techniques in the world. It's a big claim. Mate, you just said you pulled it up on Amazon. It's currently 536 bucks to buy this book new. So, if anyone wants to buy my used copy, I'll sell it for, for 100 or two. Couple. Oh, you can go higher than that. I think 250? 300. 250? Yeah. I've just revealed my lowest. <laughs> Must be a technique. Must be a technique by Ian here. Just like I'm pretty sure I'm, it up. I'm pretty sure I bought it for about thirty when I bought it. Yeah. Um, but Probably highball bit of inflation. Well. Yeah. <laughs> but readings, readings everywhere. Psychic readings. They're found throughout history, throughout the world. They seem to defy explanation. You know, you or someone you know, they, you go get a reading, and it leaves you or them completely astonished because they seem incredible and intriguing. You go to a psychic, you've never met them before, and then all of a sudden she describes your personality with great accuracy. She identifies events in your past, names of people you know. She mentions specific facts about your life that how could they possibly know, your career, your plans for the future. They give you a bit of a glimpse of what's coming on the horizon. Everything sounds pretty good, and you think, how is this possible? Like, how can a complete stranger talk to you as if they know everything about you? They must have some kind of psychic powers. They must. They must. I've been bored in before. I saw a bloke called... Omar might just share a bit of that later, but coming out of that, I was calling everyone thinking, this is insane. <laughs> Omar is you, a genius. You wrote me and I went and saw him as well. Yeah, I thought he was like a Jesus. I literally <laughs> thought he was, it was insane. Like I enjoyed it and everything he said seemed to be absolutely spot on and fantastic <laughs> and super impressed. So, yeah. insane. <laughs> There's a, a testimonial here in the book of someone who got a reading. They said, oh, I really enjoyed it. Everything that he says was absolutely spot on. Everything he says that was going to happen to me seems absolutely fantastic. I was very impressed. He did a personality analysis on me and was really right, absolutely spot on. Now, that's a real quote from a real person who received a real detailed reading from someone that she'd never met before. Uh, it involved all sorts of apparently accurate statements about their life, career, worries, hopes, and ambitions. The thing is, the reading was an absolute sham from start to finish. The reason he knows is because he was the one who did it. Yeah. He did it live on TV uh, in front of a whole bunch of people and she just thought he was a, had psychic powers, but he just said, well, I was completely bullshitting. I was making it all up. So, Ian, he's not Jesus. So, is an Omar, the dude I saw. They're not Jesus. None <laughs> of them are the, the next coming or prophets. They're always relying entirely on cold reading and it's the most psychologically compelling and persuasive communication technique in the world. Mm. So, what we're going to do in this book, we're going to sort of dissect cold reading. He says, well, what is cold reading? A simple definition could be how to talk to people so that they think you're psychic, even though you're not. He says maybe a more useful definition is he likes to take the ideas and concepts involved in psychic readings and apply them to other contexts without being a psychic. Things like selling, management, teaching, anything involving influence and persuasion. So, Ian's definition of cold reading is a set of communication strategies that enable you to influence what other people think, feel, or believe. So, there's a few misconceptions out there about cold reading. Some people think it's all about body language that, you know, you, you read that book that we read, the definitive book of body language or something, and you can just read someone's mind based on their body language and their nonverbal communication. Everyone's always saying it's 93% or it's probably a bullshit <laughs> stat, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, what he's saying is it can play an important role to really understand someone. It's only a very small slice of the overall picture you're playing with here. That's all right. Another misconception is that this cold reading, it's all about shrewd observation, some kind of Sherlock Holmes. They realize that, oh, there's a, I see that the glasses that they had was slightly broken, but it's been fixed recently. So, it must mean that they had a fall or it must mean they got into a fight and thinking that some kind of Sherlock Holmes shrewd observation is what turns them into a psychic. But he says that it, he's not really doing any of that either. The other one's fishing. So, it's a you know, you'd think in, out there that the cold reader is just fishing for clue, trying to elucidate information from the client without um, it being too obvious. Now, there's a bit of truth about this and cold reading can involve subtle ruses to obtain information, but this fishing technique is, again, only a small part of the complete explanation, not the big part. Another one is vagueness. You might just think, oh, they're just saying things that apply to everyone. Oh, you're going to be very happy and successful, something ridiculously vague like that. Often you see it in the horoscopes in the newspaper, people read them and it could obviously literally applies to, to anyone. Any of the horoscopes could mean anything to you at any point in time. But he's saying that the point of his cold reading is not just to say random basic shit. It's actually to inject some specific information um, so that a stranger thinks that, wow, they actually really truly understand and know me. Before reading the, this book, that one and the next one I'm talking about, I thought that's all they did. They were really good at just vagueness and just trying to capture everyone. Again, we'll find techniques that's you know, somewhat true. But the big one, 
misconception apparently, but I thought it was me to a T, <laughs> is gullibility. You're just an idiot. You're going in there and you just totally buy into a bullshit story and you go out just being gullible. That's right. There is, Of course, there are going to be some people who are more open than others. Uh, and if someone's completely closed off, they're not going to believe a single word of anything you say. But he's not saying that if you believe all this, then you're super gullible at all. He's saying it's just uh, everyone's a little bit gullible in the right circumstances, but uh, it's more, much more than that. So in this episode, we're going to cover some of the, th- the things that a cold reader can do. I mean, you can use these skills to your own benefit if you're that way inclined. I know, Asha, you love a bit, of, <laughs> bit of cold reading, whipping it out on people. Or it's also interesting to just figure out what the hell they've been up to as well, eh? That's it. We're going to talk about making statements that can't be wrong, how to extract information without seeming to be fishing, how to predict the future and be right every single time, how to present yourself to seem more believable and trustworthy, uh, but probably more importantly, the as I said, the, the skills and applying it to the real world, more like building rapport, establishing credibility, fostering trust, creating persuasive messaging, and maybe getting people to do what you want. Just slid that one in. Maybe just getting people <laughs> yeah. to do what you want. Well, just, what is, what's the dark. subtitle? The most persuasive psychological manipulation technique in the world. That's you said what he that says. like a light, just friendly. Eh, maybe just make people <laughs> do it. It was quite a dark statement <laughs> there, <laughs> Jay. But the way that we're going to start with that, though, you know, we're going to start with ways you can do it, and um, it begins with making statements. And the first strategy, tactic, or what would you call it? Technique. Yeah. Here is the rainbow ruse. Hit us. Yeah, we want to make statements that can't be wrong, and this is probably the one that. Um, got me interested in this. Uh, the rainbow ruse, it's giving the, you know, you're crediting the, he calls them, you know, the client, whoever you're giving the reading on, you give them the personality trait and its opposite. Uh, so, you might say, oh, you can be a very considerate person, you know, you're very quick to provide help for others. But of course, there are times, if you're honest with yourself, that you recognize a bit of a selfish streak in yourself. Yeah. You just said both. You're very generous, you're very giving, but also you're very selfish. Yeah, uh, I really <laughs> like it. Or there's another one here. There's an inherent neatness, like you have to have everything in its place, both in your work and in your home and even in your friendship circles, but this does not always prevail sometimes. You let things pile up both cyclically and emotionally. <laughs> the reason I uh, I suppose I, got, I wanted to check out this book was I remember I had a... Um, had a coffee with a listener of what you will learn. I don't know if she still listens. Her name's Maya. Maybe may may or may not still be listening. It was about eighteen months ago. Anyway, I remember saying like I met her. I thought oh she was a bit nervous at first, but then I could kind of feel her warming up, and I sort of said oh I can you know I can see on the whole like you're a bit a bit quiet and a bit reserved, um, and maybe sometimes a little bit shy. But when the circumstances are right, I could see that you could really be the life of the party if the mood strikes you. I was like what the fuck did I just say? That was- so you're very quiet. But also, you vary the life of the party. Like I said, the two things that are exact opposites. And I was like, there's something to this. And that's when I, I started digging into Did you say that accident? Yeah, not knowing, but. Before reading the book, I was upon like. Upon reflection, you were like, upon that's reflection. an interesting statement. Yeah. I was like, I've said something that. Uh, an oxymoron, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> something, the ox. that, something that. How can you be like both quiet and reserved and shy, but also the life of the party? But it's also very, very true. Because she was like, yeah, that's exactly how I am. I was yeah. like, how can two opposite things be true? And they think it's true, and I think it's true, but. Um, Everyone thinks it's true. <laughs> I, I think it's true about me as well. Yeah, exactly. Another one is uh, the, the Barnum statement here, and it's about a legend. P.T. Barnum, legendary showman, I mean, he's always said something that could please everybody. And a similar book we had on this as a technique was Robert Greene's Law, Laws of Human Nature. Yeah, that was when uh, there was a few things. Remember how he was talking about, I think it was in the influence and manipulation uh, type of chapter where he said there's a few things that everybody believes about themselves. Like, for example, one statement that you could say that sounds very true to someone but really could apply to anyone. You know, you, you tend to feel that you have a lot of unused capacity and that people don't always give you full credit for your abilities. I, I think that's true. I think I could Across do a lot board. more and nobody's really giving me credit for it. And I think everybody probably feels the same thing. You know, another one could be, you know, some of your hopes and goals tend to be pretty unrealistic, but you like to set them high anyway. I think a lot of people got high goals. I want to that- say yes to that. <laughs> But it feels like it's it's tailored to you as a person, these things. Or another one, you are naturally inclined to be kind and generous, but you have learned not to let your generosity be exploited. Uh, yeah. Um, yes to all three. <laughs> you yes to all three? <laughs> Bang on, mate. I, I was, mate, I'd like to be generous, but I don't like to get burnt. So, <laughs> mate, you feel like a psychic. So, building on these sort of statements, you can work on another technique called fine flattery. And these are elements that are designed to flutter your client in subtle ways. And everyone likes a bit of flattery, gets their shoulders and their knees rubbed up a little bit and um, win agreements from them. 
that's it. That's a, the point, I guess, of the reading is you want people to agree with you that the things that you're saying are correct about them. This is a bad way to be to do flattery is like, oh, you're a very honest person. That's very bad because it's pretty overt. It's like you might just think, oh, you're just trying to butter me up here. Also, they might think, oh, well, I'm not that honest. I cheat on board games or maybe I cheat on my taxes or maybe I cheat on my spouse. A much better version of the same statement, you are very honest, could be something like, I sense that you're generally more honest than most people around you. You're not always a saint, but you do understand the importance of being trustworthy and you value honesty highly. Like, that sounds like you are very honest, but in a nice sort of way. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like just yesterday, man, I just got caught being a bit too overt in praise of someone and it's almost too much. And then, <laughs> yeah. they, you know, it turns off. So I probably could start using sentences like this to actually let it through and influ- start influencing them in a different way. <laughs> so other safe bets might be about them being hardworking and diligent being fair-minded, an independent thinker, warm and loving, knowing how to be a good friend, being wise in the ways of the world. You could probably add all of these different different ways for people. Yeah, definitely. If you say it in the right way, you can flatter them without being such a suck-up. Yeah. Yeah. Just pissing (laughs) in their pocket. Yeah, I just... Anyway... I kept just framing the comments. I'm not trying to uh, blow smoke up your ass. (laughs) Not as eloquent as this way at all. Yeah. If you say that you're not blowing smoke up their ass, you're almost definitely blowing smoke up their ass, aren't you? double (laughs) smoke. It's it's worse. (laughs) That's right. So, that's all about making statements where you can be basically 100% accurate uh, without knowing a single thing about the person. So, another area or another topic is about how do you extract information from people? Now, this is something we could all use in different... Uh, walks of life but of course um, the cold reader needs to find how to get their information from you in a real subtle way to actually be able to use it and really impress it on you um, how how, you know they're just intuitively (laughs) getting everything that's right the first one is the least subtle it's just a direct question you know and it's probably only going to happen at the very start of the reading you know tell me what's on your mind or or they might say oh when most people come to see me there's been something weighing heavily on them perhaps some area of their life they're looking for answers in what would this be in your case it's a very direct question you're not hiding it at all yeah mate my, when i saw omar the guy i saw he asked this direct question and i didn't have him a good answer so he really <laughs> wanted information to use later obviously and because i didn't give him a good answer he goes well look i'm not going to see people who <laughs> don't know what they want to see here so he was about to close the door on me wow knowing that if I've driven all that way, I'm going to say, oh, no, there is something <laughs> on my mind. And then like you overshare almost what's on your mind. You yeah. know what I mean? And then he uses it and he also seems more powerful and authoritative. That's, a actually, very, that's actually very smart from him because if, you got that, if you're not going there, you don't know what you're doing. You probably heard from someone, oh, this guy's amazing. And then you go and then you're like, oh, I didn't really get anything out of that. But if you go there with an intention and then he learns what you wanted there and then he can tell you exactly yeah. what that is and you're like, oh, man, this guy's amazing. Then you tell everybody. Well, yeah, because that conception you don't want them to be linked with money. They're mm. all about making money, because then it sort of just ruins it. Whereas if they he gets rid of that at the very start, it makes him think like he's a prophet who's yeah. who's above money. That's probably <laughs> what I ended up being a little bit like. <laughs> oh, very nice. Uh, another way of getting it a sn- slightly sneakier than those direct questions is what he calls the incidental questions. It's like a small little conversational phrase you tack onto the end of a longer statement, uh, where you know maybe. You might think um, one of the things we said before, oh, you're very shy, but in the right circumstances, you become the life of the party. Oh, is this making sense to you? Or can you relate to this? Like adding on that little question on the end, you've given the statement and then you kind of get wanting a bit more from them. Yeah. So, they could do that with a, a bit of a good chance guess as well, right? So, like, you know, for me and Omar, he kind of just said something back, oh, your mum's worried about you, which is probably a bit of a Barnum statement, right? Everyone's got that. Especially a, what, 22-year-old boy, yeah. almost every mum would be a little bit worried about and them for some like reason. And it looks like a bit of a wild guy as well at the time. <laughs> and, um, you know, what would that be? And then, oh, God, he's on to me. He's like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> she says, worrying about you at night time, like, because I'm Uber driving late at night and she's worried that I'm going <laughs> to... Anyway, but he did that and then I just gave more and more information because of how he did it. That's actually smart from him. As I said, 22-year-old oh, boy. He's a prophet, I'm telling you. You know, she, your mum's worried about you at night time. Most, you know, 22 year old blokes, you know, going out to parties or going out to bars or you're in the city and there's been a lot of violence in the city and stabbings recently. And so you tell she's people worried. who party, yeah. who got a bit of a party look and, you know. And yours is probably that, but it also, as you said, oh, you're Uber driving, you're late, you know, you're coming home at 2 a.m., there's a random people getting into your car. And in your brain, you applied that same statement to exactly what he said. Exactly. <laughs> smart, smart from the, the, the prophet. Another one here from Prophet, I don't know if he did this one, but a veiled question. It's a request for information worded to sound like a statement, but the psychic acts as if she is giving information when in fact she's trying to extract it. Another sneaky, sneaky, sneaky here. 
It is pretty sneaky, you know. I'm, I'm picking up an impression here that you could be involved in work that involves a lot of traveling. I don't know if this is now or at some point in the past, but that's what the cards are suggesting. Is that making sense to you? So really you're saying like you're involved in travel at some point in the past or the present or the future. Like It sounds like a statement, but you're really fishing at this point for, for information. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful that. My Man, brain, just, when, you, when we're going through this, I'm thinking of just context. So I'm going to use, use some things like that because, yeah, it's great. <laughs> when I... um. I actually had Omar as well when I saw him after you did. I mm. found my old recording because he said record this. I listened you back too. and he was like, oh, so do you work in finance or development? And at the time, I was like, oh, wow. How did he get that? Like that was at the very, very start and I was working at the bank at the time. I was like, oh, yeah, finance. But then I was thinking now, I was like, oh, development is pretty broad. Like develop business development, developing websites, construction and development. Like the mm. development covers a hell of a lot of stuff. And same with finance. Oh. You know, you could be an accountant, you could be a banker, you could be, you know, working in some kind of something to do with money. Oh, Argony's some point. got a vanishing negative there, or a the forking technique, which mm. comes later because he says that you could do personal development because everyone's in that. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> everyone, <laughs> on, almost certainly, if he misses on those two specifics, he'd fall back on personal development. Oh, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Right. Because everyone is a genius. Seeing a psychic <laughs> is probably looking to better themselves in some way or that way inclined. That's it. Yeah. Are you in finance or development? Oh, actually, I'm an artist. Oh, sorry. I meant development. Like, are you into personal yeah. development? Yeah, you go, <laughs> no, there you go. You go, yes. I thought I knew that. I knew you'd be into personal development and, and developing tech. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, oh. That's good. <laughs> that's good. I so, the, read it, the <laughs> listeners are just sold on us being psychics. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we talked about making statements that are that can't be wrong. We talked about extracting information so that you can use it uh, back against people, or you know, not against them. That sounds a bit evil. Um, but That's then, what you mean? Though, <laughs> but then, what about predicting the future? How can we give people accurate predictions that are pretty much guaranteed to be correct? The first way to get a favorable result from making a prediction is quite simply to predict something that the client wants to hear. <laughs> That's right. Neat. They don't want to hear something bad. Yeah, they don't want to hear, oh, you're going to die and you're going to get cancer and you're going to, you know, uh, you're going to lose your job. They're not going to be thinking, this is a shit psychic. But if you say, oh, you, you're in line for a promotion, you're going to, you know, you've got a big international trip coming up. That sounds phenomenal. That sounds like a great one. I suppose for, we used a bit of this. You know, most of advertising is kind of this, you know, an ad is implicitly saying if you buy this product, your life's going to be better than if you don't buy it. What was our, you know, we said in the shit they never taught you, every lesson will be useful and one might change your life. Yeah. If you're looking for personal development books, you're looking for a lesson to change your life. Yeah. And I think if you're 80% into buying it, you read that statement and go, oh, yeah, I reckon this could change my life. <laughs> we weren't bullshitting about that listen. That was before, that before was we legit. read this book. Yeah, That yeah. was true. That was legit. <laughs> that will change your life. That actually will change your life. <laughs> Pretty certain of that. There's a few, uh, you can make certain predictions. So, these are guaranteed to work 100% of the time. They're a bit weaker, I reckon. You know, someone new is going to come into your life. That's guaranteed to happen. You know, a minor illness or in injury is indicated by these cards. If you're using tarot cards, you know, that's probably going to, everyone's going to have some kind of illness or injury at some point. You will experience problems with an investment or maybe something you bought won't work the way you expected it. I know I just bought a dryer and it was pretty shit house and wasn't <laughs> expecting it. So, I think everyone can everyone guarantee- fall into that one. <laughs> Absolutely. The key here is that there's no when associated with it. You know, you're going to meet someone new in your life today, next week, in a year. Like that's guaranteed to happen at some point. You know, you're going to experience problems with an investment. At some point, it's going to happen. It might not be tomorrow, but it could be in two months or it could be in two years, but it's guaranteed to happen. Yeah, I like it. And there's another one here, which is probably a bit more powerful and that's self-fulfilling predictions. And another way here is just to make the prediction have a self-fulfilling element, especially with those pertaining to character or personality. Remember, there's all that study that comes up in books, not this one, but you know that teacher who mm. was told about the, the A students and the D students, but they mix it up, unfortunately, and she treated the D students like she treated the A students, and the Ds end up being like the A's, <laughs> and the A's end up being like the D's. So, That's right. how you actually treat people can be a self-fulfilling prophecy in how they act and go about themselves in the world. Yeah, definitely. I think it's called the Pygmalion effect. I only remember it because it's a weird word uh, yeah. i think it is anyway but there's an interesting one here you can give a self-fulfilling prophecy to someone you know you might say you'll begin to adopt a more positive attitude and a friendly outlook on life you'll let go of a lot of old grievances you'll start being a good friend to yourself and to others and you'll soon have a larger social circle and present so if you give that to someone in a reading and they're heading out the door and thinking oh this person said i'm going to make a lot more friends if they truly believe it they're going to be more friendly. If you think, oh, there's more friends coming, oh, I'm going to meet a new person, I'll be a lot more friendly to them. You'd be less of a see you next Tuesday when you meet people and they be just a lot more open. And it turns out that if you are more open and more friendly, then you make more friends. So yeah. it worked. Yeah. Well, it's probably one of the good 
ways you could be a psychic. He's doing yeah. stuff like that. And there's endless variations here. If you want someone to gain more confidence, resolve relationship issues, become less anxious, go on a fitness and health adventure, revisiting an old hobby and so on. Lots of, <laughs> lots of ways you can make himself Actually, that's a good one. Yeah, if you say, oh, oh, the, I can see in the in the crystal ball that there was something you used to do when you were a kid and you really loved it and you've kind of let go of it but there's I, I can see it coming back into your life and then all of a sudden nice. they get you know inspired and they pick up the violin again or they go and get, go start drawing again or whatever it was and that's self-fulfilling a that's a button <laughs> everyone everyone will think they're talking about their own personal hobby and you forget everyone had a hobby <laughs> everyone, a everyone's got something yeah <laughs> oh nice So next, we're going to look at the context of the reading, and there's a few rippers in here, Ashto. One is the win-win game, not the win-win in terms of seven habits and five <laughs> highly effective people, perhaps a more psychic reading, dark and sinister version of the win-win here. <laughs> this is a win-win. This is a guaranteed way to win. Even if you miss, you can turn it into a hit. So the elements and techniques we covered can deliver one full hits before. However, there's often going to be times when the psychic offers a statement that the client rejects and you're in a bit of trouble there, but... There are different approaches with the win-win game. So one could be uh, you throw out a whole bunch of very specific, um, one statement that includes a whole bunch of specific information. And you might say, oh, I'm, I'm sensing a connection overseas. Maybe someone named Mike or Michael. It could be to do with work or it could be a friend that you just haven't seen for a long time. Can you, can you work out who I'm talking about? Now, there's a lot in there. You know, you've got overseas connection, work, friend, Mike, Michael. It could be anything. You might get lucky and... You know, they've got an old colleague who named Mike who moved overseas and you got three from three. But it might be like, oh, I've got a friend overseas, but uh, his name's Simon, not Michael. And that's when the psychic's like, oh, yes, that's a person I was thinking about. Yeah, this is an old friend of yours that abroad somewhere at the moment. Uh, what they were wanting to say was, you know, you haven't been in touch for a while, but it's time to speak again soon. And they've got, they might have an opportunity coming your way. <laughs> and it's like all of a sudden, like, you made all this random shit up, Mike that old colleague and all of a sudden it's now Simon who's overseas and they're 100% right. They got it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> so you probably engineered this broader range of sales statements when you're trying to sell to someone and it's just sort of focus on what they, they latch onto and think and goes, oh, yeah, I knew you were <laughs> someone who uh, valued this and high quality and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's good. If you, if you have three pings at it and you can get one and then just focus someone in on who that likes one. likes costs or improving the world or <laughs> – you probably covered everyone who's one of those That's two right. or a third is social. Yeah. You know, you got them. Another part of the win-win game is awareness. So, a bit more sneaky here. Um, and this is where the psychic maintains that they are correct and the client just doesn't know about it <laughs> all the facts. They're just claiming it though. Yeah, this one's a bit sneaky. You know, they might say, oh, uh, let's have a look at, uh, you know, the financial and money matters at the moment. I sense that a friend has recently approached you about a financial problem or concern. Can you place this person? And the client might say, no, nah, no one's spoken to me about money issues recently. And the psychic might say, ah, well, they may have decided they didn't want to bother you with the problem. There is, you, you do have a friend who is having a financial problem. She wanted to talk to you about it, but she knows that you're probably very caring and concerned and she thought that it, it, she didn't want to burden you by mentioning it to you. So, like, it's true. <laughs> it's 100% true, but you just don't know about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, there's no way I to reckon lose I'd lap that up. It's a classic win. Yeah, you would lap it up. You'd be starting to think about yeah, everyone's got a shady mate. Everyone's got a bit of a shady mate who seems to be a bit down. You're like, oh, shit, I better call. <laughs> you know, call and say, how are you going financially? And they'll be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Another type is uh, subjectivity. And this you can use this turning a miss into a hit when the statement that you make has some kind of sort of value judgment or some kind of subjective opinion in there. And that's where you can say, well, my statement's correct. Maybe you just don't see it that way. So, for example, the psychic might say, oh... Let's move on to career matters. I get the impression that this is a very positive time for you with some very good career advancement and some clear signs of progress towards your goals. The client might say, oh, not really. I lost my job a few weeks ago. I don't know why I didn't do anything wrong. I've been applying for jobs. I haven't even got a single callback. I haven't done a single interview, so I'm pretty cooked at the moment. <laughs> all, of, all of a sudden, that thing that you said was all positive is not looking so positive. It sounds, sounds as wrong as you can get. That's a full <laughs> miss. But then psychic... Being smart here, just just sort of revises it a little bit. Well, I can understand that. You probably feel like it's a bleak picture, but look, things are a blessing in the skies. Out of the out of the ash, new seeds will grow, and <laughs> and bad situations have a blessing in disguise. So this is 
what the cards must be suggesting. <laughs> yeah, you might say it seems all you know pretty dark at the moment, but really that was the wrong job for you. You shouldn't have been there anyway. The opportunity that I was sensing was a completely new step in a different direction that maybe you'd never thought about, but is closer to your your true desires. Or <laughs> you know, you, you can, it's a bit of a stretch, but I reckon you can whip that out. Anything subjective to be a bit of a positive. So another part of strategy under the category of context is cultivating feedback. Now, in theory, a psychic reading could consist of the psychic doing all of the talking and the client just listening and listening and taking it in. However, it only works best if the client is doing a lot of the speaking and providing plenty of the responses. Same goes for selling. You want them to be doing a lot more speaking than you. If you're speaking more, then it's it's not going to be success. So for this reason, you need to actually do whatever you can to make the reading seem like an interactive dialogue. That's right. You need to ask open questions. So not yes or no questions, not are you interested in music, yes or no. A better question is tell me what sort of music do you like because everybody likes something and it really opens up for them to start giving a bit of a proper response. And there's obvious verbal stuff that they might be telling you but there's also non-verbal which often reveals even more. So for example, someone could say, I wouldn't say that's entirely true or someone could say, I wouldn't say that was entirely true <laughs> or I could someone could say, I wouldn't say that was entirely true. So, you know, there's different meanings you can take out of that. So, that, if you're focusing on that, it means that other parts of what you have said have been accurate but not this part mm. or, you know, I wouldn't say that was entirely true, meaning you're probably more right than you are wrong but just not 100% right. <laughs> so, there's different different bits of information you can learn from the same statement. Yeah, that's right. That's pretty. You're probably pretty on the money there. Or another one is like, I wouldn't say that's entirely true, meaning you bang on. I just don't believe it, but all my mates would say, yeah, you're, you're spot on here. Yeah. <laughs> um, mate, what about forking? Forking's a good one. We sort of half mentioned it before about the, are you in finance or development? Yeah, well, it means offering statements that could be said in two directions. So I mentioned one in the, in yeah, before it was like, for example, if you're in a business setting or if I am, you know, are you looking to save money? And they said, no, we're in it for sustainability reasons. Then you could reply, oh, thank God. I knew you weren't a money-hungry developer again. The world needs to change. <laughs> That's but pretty if, good. But if they said, you're in it for money, and then they said, we are, we go, well, fantastic. <laughs> I've got, well, I've got a way of making money for you. So, in both cases, the, the forking, it goes to the direction that you I want like it. and it, it works. I like it. You pick, yeah, I like it. You pick one side of the... Uh, of the argument and if they agree, fantastic, you just go further down that and if they say, no, it's wrong, you say, oh, great, I'm so glad and you take it in the other direction. Um, it's pretty fantastic. Well, it's very rare that you're going to go out and become a tarot card reader. No, good. As deck. I said, that Astro just pulled out the tarot cards. <laughs> so, not for everyone but Astro is one of them. You're going to do it. Matt, I've got to... It's Shit. probably more of you're a... You're going to give me a tarot reading. Uh, I'll give you a quick one. i yeah, this was totally good. unprepared. This is. Uh, but uh, I'll give you. I'll give you a short one. Maybe we'll do just like a simple, like past, present, future. Yep. It's more of a um, visual thing. Obviously, the cards. Yeah. Mate, just give it. Mate, give it a little. Give it a little knock on the top there, just to let the cards know that you're coming. Mate, are coming. you left or right handed? Left. Left. What's is that? Your left? Yeah. I need your opposite hand. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so just because it's a bit more intuitive. Yeah. Just cut the cut the deck. Cut the deck sort of halfway somewhere. Yeah, okay, that. I'll start dishing out these. Mate, take the uh, take that top card, maybe reveal it at the end, and I'll give like a do past. I, do I flip it yet? Oh, uh, you can have a look. We'll just do like a we'll just do like a past, present, future, and we'll see how we'll see how we go with this. Oh, mate! So in the past, we're talking about the knight, the knight of wands. I guess to describe it, we've got a you know a soldier on a horse uh, with the wand. I think what the part, what this card is kind of telling me about you is that you've probably been through a few battles in the past and you've often come out victorious. There's been a lot of times that you've uh, fought maybe negative forces or maybe desires or maybe it's people, uh, but you've, you've had some kind of battles in the past, but you turned out to be the, the knight on the horse. You didn't turn out to be the, the loser down the bottom of the pits here, but you've actually come out victorious in the past. Have you, has there been any nice. sort of battles that you've been through in the past where you've so, seemed to maybe struggle through, but you came out on top? Yeah, it was good. I think I... Can I be brutally honest? Yeah. <laughs> I think it was stronger when you went less because as soon as I saw that... I had a different conception on mine <laughs> oh. that when you went more specific on the people road a little bit. Oh, nice. But my, my immediate thought was like, oh, that looks like me when I was in the past footy captain and oh. you know, that sort of thing. So oh, that's nice. what I was saying. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. But anyway, I'll, I don't want to kill you. That. I don't want to kill your flow. No, that's sorry. good. No, that's good. 
I'll try, oh man, this is a shit card. This is unfortunate. Um, this is in the present. This is more about, okay, you're, previously you had the Knight of Wands. Now we've got the Page of Wands. Now you're more of the, the servant boy. This is probably more like uh, battles that you're currently facing, sometimes seemingly insurmountable. They seem a little bit on top of you, but the good thing here is you've got two feet on the ground. You've got a lot of power. Uh, you may not realize it yet, but whilst things are, could seem a bit of a struggle, there could be a bit of a turnaround not too far away. Oh, I like it. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. How, is there any? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Things can be turned. No, that, I, probably in my business context right now, there is something there. A few struggles sure. that hopefully turning around soon. A few soon. struggles that turn around soon, for sure. <laughs> I like. I'm in. You're in? Okay, in the future. The Knight of Cups. This is what I like to see for a, a card about the future. We've got here another Knight. Man, this is you've seemed to have gone they're from both, the past. They're both facing each other as well. That's right. You've gone from the past. You were the Knight of Wands to the present, where you're the Page of Wands, which feels like a bit of a step back, but it's actually leading to a much more prosperous future. The Knight of Cups. We're seeing again a knight on a horse. This time he's got a cup. This represents wins and positive gains. Uh, it could be in the you know metaphorical sense, but I think in this case it's in actually the literal sense, where it could be bringing back from battle some kind of treasure that you've taken from the other side. Yeah, well played. That's a, that's a good one. It's probably that classic statement where you just think your, your future is going to be very positive and you're going to be bringing battle a dragon and grab some treasure <laughs> and bring it back. So, I'll, I'll buy into that one. It probably that's works good. for you specifically because you uh, know the story of battling the dragon and getting the treasure. So, that, yeah. one, that one probably helped. That one got me. And man, what's, the one that you picked with your, your pick was more around a general sense of you as a yeah. person just to tie these all these three together. The Magician... Okay, so the magician, you can see here, it's these are actually all the four elements, like kind of the four suits, I guess. You've got the cups, the pentacles, the swords, and the wands, and they're all laid out on the table. And then you've got the magician at the back who's really controlling them all. What this card is saying is you've actually got everything you need in front of you. You've got the metaphorically the pentacles, the cups, the swords, the wands. You've got everything at your disposal, but really it's up to the person you're the magician at the back there who's using all these. So there's nothing more that you need to buy or learn or acquire or create. Really, you've got them all at hand and now it's up to you to put them to good use and make the most of them. I like it. Yeah, I'll buy into that. <laughs> Definitely the, like a, a Jones business of the magician. Setting. Yeah, the magician, creativity, trying to create things in the world, that sort of stuff. So I'll 100% buy into that. That was great, Ash. <laughs> I um, Probably it makes it harder when you know the person. Very. Because Much like... Harder. There's an extra subcontext you might be reading into. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, it's sort of like if you don't know them at all, you can go completely generic and vague as well. Um, yeah. But the interesting one, the best was my brother, Nige, yeah. when I first whipped him out. And this is probably 12 months ago. Now, I knew that he just got married. I knew that he just bought a new house. Uh, I knew that he had a kid on the way. And like all these things that I knew. And I said them in a way like I think, you know, the, the nine of pentacles came up, which is all about creating prosperity for, you know, you've got a family, so you want to build for the future. Uh, and he was like, then I heard him on the phone the next uh, <laughs> day when he called his wife and he's like, oh, the car, like, Adam, he just knew everything. Like he knew that we just bought a house and he knew that we were having a, a baby daughter. And she's like... Of is course it? he knows. He already knows that. He's like, no, 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 but it wasn't him. Like the cards knew it. And oh, <laughs> so he, he was really, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was, he really he was, was laughing it up. Did you charge him? <laughs> no, nah, I didn't charge him. Didn't Next charge one, him. Next one. Um, but I suppose for me, it's less about that. I don't, I don't whip out the cards. Uh, what was most impressive much. then is your memory on around each card. Did you just like make it totally up on the spot or did, is there some? Uh, I read one, I read, there's one book, you know, The, the Ways of the Tarot or whatever. Gotcha. I read about each card two or three times, but now I've probably learned enough about the card, enough about what each one is to you then make something up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nice. That's good. Yeah. Like <laughs> so I suppose for uh, me, I really enjoyed this book because I had that already had that interest. Uh, I know Michael Shermer, the guy that we interviewed, he mentioned this book on his podcast and that's why I picked this one up as well. And like a, there was a part of me that was like, oh, I wouldn't mind just learning the tarot cards and stuff. But it's been a much broader application. So learning things that I probably use almost every day now uh, some of these techniques and statements, not in a psychic reading, but more in a conversation, just speaking to people, mostly at work, you know, trying to get feedback, uh, trying to build rapport, trying to make statements that are correct, but also hedge your bets at the same time without uh, them recognizing that you're hedging your bets. Yeah, I like it. That's a good one, Asho. That I think that, yeah, if you take this book too literally, it's probably not mm. the right way to go about it. It's what you can pull from it and use in, in different contexts and settings, which I don't think he did it 
he could have done a better job of actually mm. making that part literal, but it, it can be, a, you know, it, it isn't literal. So Yeah, I think that interestingly with this book, so this is the full facts of cold reading and this was very literal on the reading, you know, the cards and the psychic and the doing actual readings. And then he has another book called Cold Reading for Business, which is more about applying these techniques to the real world. But he lost something in the application sense as well. Like I thought that book was much worse. Yeah. If you can work out how to read this book and read it as a metaphor for applying it to the real world, I think that's probably the best middle ground. Mm-hmm.